Yeah, thanks for staying in the last talk. And I think we are running late. I chat a bit quick. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, iris impact on uh, tropic convection. Um, before I go ahead, I want to uh, thank you, my visiting scholars, Ru Wei and Chen Tian, work with me on those uh, studies. So I'm going to, com I mean, Iris cross interaction is mostly uh, ignored by this group uh, so far, I think. Um, so I'm trying to convince you um, it's important. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the two things. One is about uh, um, uh, Iris impact on the convective intensity. So this is from my recent study uh, um, just published in Science. And then another part is, uh, goes to the uh, stratophone anvil properties, which is what we call the mechaphysical uh, effect. So this is also uh, published uh, a while ago at the PNAS. So about the convective invigoration, so um, there's two papers now published in Science as a research article. Um, both are uh, observational driven, and both are from Go Amazon, uh, from Amazon uh, region. So uh, the first one, Andrew, um, 2004, they observed the delay uh, for the onset of the warm rain. So this is for dry season and the, the areas and most uh, the um, BAMS bony particles. So the hypothesis that uh, this delay would uh, invigorate the clouds uh, be, uh, due to uh, cold, well, now we call the cold phase invigoration, which is summarized by Rosefeld in Science 2008 as a review article. So basically, it, it says that uh, you know when you have a lot of CCN at the cloud base, then you form a lot of droplets, uh, but small. So those then will suppress the warm rain, allows more droplets being transported to the uh, cold phase, and the freezing of the well release more light than heat and invigorate clouds. So this this actually stimulates many studies. Um, but uh, those studies, you know, we show that wind shear uh, RH and the cap could modify this effect. So this is a very idealized situation. So in reality, uh, other factors could impact. So a major bottleneck in this field, uh, in this direction, is that uh, with lack of observations, particularly the uh, object velocity, object speed. And also, it's hard to disentangle the Earth's impact from the impact of meteorology uh, variables. So in our study, we are trying to, uh, we are trying to uh, address these uh, uh, difficulties. So we um, look at the, the this is, uh, uh, we, ca I ca we call the warm phase immigration, which I will detail the later. Uh, but I want to emphasize uh, the particles are different. Previously, those. Uh, this cold phase invigoration we, is most applied to the CCN, which are the larger particles that can activate, being activated at the cloud base, while our um, warm phase invigoration most applied to the pollution particles from the over cities, while the particles are uh, very small, they cannot be activated at the cloud base. So we have this unique field ca uh, campaign from the Amazon. Uh, provide us this uh, unique uh, set to uh, allow us to look at the Earth's impact on the convective intensity and also pinpoint the Earth's impact apart from changes of uh, meteorology fields. So this is the city, the uh, Amazon, um, the Molas city, the largest city in the central, Amer uh, central um, Amazon. And then at the downwind set, we have this DOE arm set called T3. We measure the uh, updraft velocity from uh, vertical point profile and also aerosol site distribution. And uh, the stone, a lot of stones happening here. We, we measured a lot of stones during the weather season. Well, you know, you have uh, the, the meteorological conditions are very similar. It's all humid and the weight, while well, well, aerosols transported here, uh, the balloon properties are different. So this will allow us to uh, try to you know, um, isolate the Earth's impact. So we carefully selected this locally occurring uh, stone systems observed uh, in the 2014 weather season. And uh, so we found the 17 such cases with valid Earth measurements. Also with 
uh, valid, uh, you know, uh, updraft core measurements. So we want to, you know, at least to have an uh, updraft core to to represent the case. So showing here is the uh, the the case, the 70 cases arranged by areas and concentrations. The uh, the contoured of the mean value of top 10 percent of updraft of speed. This is a vertical profile. As you can see, you see a clear increase. As errors increase, actually the increase is pretty dramatic if you look at the scale. And this is the mean value of the top 10 percent of updrafts. And then the cap is a circle. As you can see, the cap is pretty similar. Thing has some variability. However, the thing, uh, we do see very a lot of low thing cases in the low errors cases. So we didn't find a, a correlation. However, if you remove those uh, um, Aerosol particles um, smaller than 50 nanometer, which were called ultra aerosol particles, then you, you can see the trend is doesn't hold very uh, anymore. So this actually, um, then I, I was trying to uh, quantify this impact by regroup those cases into four aerosol groups, from low aerosol to high aerosol groups. And the, showing, the number shown here are the number of uh, convective cases. As you can see, the updraft velocity increase then from 3 to you know, 11 and 10. That's pretty dramatic. And then the, the vertical profile of the, uh, the rate of reactivity, the increase from 3 to 10 uh, to 30, from 5 to 30 dBz, which is also very dramatic. That's why we call the substantial change. And then the maximum the here, you know, the the relative magnitude is is not, is not meaningful because the the sample size for each group are different. But the the, the maximum value, the maximum run rate, uh, the occurrence actually is increase. Again, when you exclude those small particles, then it, we don't see the, uh, yeah the trend doesn't hold well anymore. So. This is from observations. We, don't, we cannot say, yeah, this is just creation. Uh, we're trying to um, also isolate, I mean, I'm trying to see if there's any meteorological correlation. Meteorological correlation. Um, I don't have too much time to go through this, but I just want to uh, say that all these pre uh, conditions, which is uh, the meteorological conditions before the convection uh, occur, doesn't have any correlation, and also large-scale convergence, we don't see that. And of course, uh, you know, I'm trying to, we're also trying to look at if model can see such a large impact, because we didn't see such impact before, uh, I also level, uh, even in the model, uh, in the modern world. So, I'm, I'm, so that's why I'm using this Wolf Spectrum Beam model, uh, similar to this typical convective events in the weather season. And at a uh, 0.5 kilometer resolution, this is the inner, uh, the, yeah, the inner domain. And this is the case, the domain action, as I think it's bigger than that. So uh, again, I just want to simply uh, um, illustrate this uh, uh, simulations we've done. So the background, the two simulations, we, uh, the one is the background, which is the background with background areas of concentrations, the balloon line for the Amunas um, region, which is, we have some small areas and particles because the region is already polluted by human activity. And then we added this balloon called background balloon over the Amunas city. So then, we're, this is just at the initial, and then we allow this balloon uh, 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 transported to downwind, uh, downwind. So, and then to look at the impact of the small particles, then we do another two simulations by remove this uh, ultra particles. So as you can see, you know, so it's called a low UIP. And, and I want to emphasize that this simulation background, the low UIP, which is the pristine Amazon conditions where we lack of the small particles. We only observe large particles in the pristine Amazon condition. So here is just uh, show, um, we validated this uh, best uh, case, baseline case, as you can see, matches the, uh, the solid red line matches with the meteorological condition and the convective, uh, this is the rain rate very well and also the egg top height very well. 
Um, so here shows the top 10% of uh, uh, updraft speed for the convection. From, uh, when you look at this, uh, this background without the uh, small particles, which is pristine uh, Amazon conditions, you can see the increase. It's, it's a similar magnitude as we observed. And then um, also for the precipitation, the increase is a few times from this dashed blue line to the, uh, you know, the, the hourly precipitation. It's just so dramatic. And then we, I want to emphasize that when you add, by adding URP only, there's a low time delay. You, you, any time delay from here to here is because of CCN change as well. So um, also, uh, we, we find out that this corresponds to the large change in the supersaturation in the cloud. So in those two cases where we do have small aerosol particles, you have large supersaturation in these updrafts. So the decrease, uh, it's so dramatic, you know, from uh, such large one to just a few percent, which is the regular updrafts uh, you probably will see. But if you lack of the small particles, you can get very high supersaturation. So I'm going to use this to illustrate the mechanism. Um, in the pristine Amazon, uh, aerosol particles, they are large, but, small, but the number low. They activate quickly at the cloud base, and then form, they collide, form rain particles quickly. And then this will remove the uh, surface area for condensation and leave a highly supersaturated environment, as shown from this box, the blue box. So however, then with the uh, small particles produced by Milan's plume, then the stone can be largely invigorated. Um, because those small particles, they cannot be activated at the cloud base until they reach to this high supersaturated area, get activated from a large number of droplets, and then provide a larger surface area for condensation. And the condensation heat enhance the convection and produce much larger cloud. And then much more uh, droplets transported to the cold phase and form uh, much stronger mixed phase processes much larger guap or hair, um, and then the, the nitrogen as well. So uh, I want to emphasize this mechanism, that two features. One, it does not delay the rain, uh, the wall rain. This is in contrast with the CCN impa impact. So because we have to have this rain foam remove the surface area to produce this highly supersaturated uh, environment. And then also, it's much more powerful compared to the cold phase immigration because uh, we, we, we have this uh, first, the enhanced heat is much larger compared to the, in, the enhanced heat at the upper level. Second, the heat is at the bottom uh, part of the lower cloud. It's a lot at the higher level. So then I'll, now I'll come to the, how the stratified ever changes by aerosol impact. This is motivated by you know, a lot of observation studies shows the increased cloud fraction and cloud top height. Um, uh, we, we do know um, people say oh, it's because of aerosol effect uh, due to convective immigration. So we want to see if model can simulate or if, or if it is because convective immigration. So we did this monthly run with a spectrum beam model at two kilometer resolution over three regions. One of the regions is the TWP region, which is the tropical convection region. And then we evaluated this, uh, the cloud of our TWP region, as you can see, the clean case, which is the, uh, the reality, uh, uh, reality of this case, compared the observations, the cloud occurrence frequency very well. Yeah, and then, uh, as is, this is dial cycle of the cloud occurrence frequency. As you can see, the timing and the magnitude match much uh, better. However, the polluted case, this is the differences of the cloud fraction. As you can see, it's uh, a predict much larger cloud fraction over the up level, and then the uh, you know reduced cloud fraction at the low level. Cloud top cut increased very significantly. And those increases are many happened at the stratified M1 region, not in the convective region. So uh, then you can see cross cyclic increase. 
So then look at the convective invigoration. It does, is it really happening? So those of the qualities we look at, if they're all positive, which means yes, there's a convective invigoration. If they're negative, which means not. So we find that the TLRP, the other tropic convection, yes, there's a uh, convective invigoration. But a lot, lot happened in, at every region. But uh, yeah, at every region, we have the convective, uh, we have the increased crop fraction, crop top height. So convective invigoration cannot uh, you, uh, enormously explain the phenomenon. But TWPV does have the strongest convective invigoration. And this is due to condensation heat, which is the one phase invigoration we, pop we just published. So here is a diagram about what's happening there. The, the mechanism is because, you know, at this polluted condition, we have a much larger convective uh, um, detrained cloud mass due to suppress of the wool rain. And then, um, most importantly, we have much smaller uh, ice particles. And this uh, has much smaller fall speed. The must uh, compare the clean case, they are three times uh, uh, smaller in, in our uh, simulation. And the, the dynamics are pretty similar. So, so then the cloud dissipation will be much slower, the, which leads very different cloud morphology at the dissipation stage. So we also did a tentative se uh, se separation, shows that the convective invigoration, even in the TLP case, is only contributed to 25% of the increased cloud fraction. So as you can see, this will produce strong uh, uh, radiative effect. So the cooling and then the um, uh, cooling in the surface on top QA and the warming in the atmosphere. The cooling, of course, is from the daytime, and the warming basically is from nighttime. So it changes the dial cycle of the radiative budget. And uh, this is, I just want to uh, yeah, the summarize. I think it's pretty clear. Um, uh, about the, the conclusion, basically, we I think we need more field campaign data over this humid, uh, warm and humid region, which is uh, our tropical region, to more uh, to tackle this problem more robustly and systematically. Because uh, um, with just glamorous field campaign, people still argue it's just uh, um, you know not too many cases, and also uh, uh, data has uncertainties, of course. And then, um, so here, yeah, I also uh, want to say that this, uh, we have this large and taller uh, stratophone. Also, we see actually much larger stratophone precipitation, which actually will feed back to, to the large scale environment. You know, the PV is changed, like uh, Josh uh, Ruby showed uh, yesterday. So that's it. And also, I want to say, uh, we are hiring a lot of uh, uh, research scientists, uh, lots of openings at PNL. Welcome to <laughs> apply. <laughs> Thank you.